In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make logos in Midjourney with a few prompt tips and how to then edit the poorly generated text and convert them to a vector format for you to use in any situation. But before we jump in, I just want to say a huge thank you. Since the last video, I have broken past the 1000 subscribers mark and I have been truly amazed by the support you have all given me. So thank you all so much. But now I know you're eager to get stuck in, so let's head to Midjourney. So we will start with the usual slash imagine command and see if we can make a cool pizza shop logo. We will add the words vector, which gives it a cleaner line design. Then we'll add simple, which will make sure it's not too complicated a design. And follow that up with modern and white background. That's so it will make it much easier to edit out just the logo later on. And we'll end the prompt with the V5 tag and see what we get. The first batch is done and they aren't quite the look we were going for but still some interesting designs and ideas. Not quite sure what is happening in some of them and a couple have pizza chefs added. So let's alter the prompt a little and see what we get. But before I do, I'm going to upscale this one as I feel we can edit this later and get something more usable. So let's just copy and paste the previous prompt but add a little more, like maybe showing a pizza slice in a pizza oven. Let's hit generate and see what it creates. Okay, so it's created four more designs for us. These are pretty cool. It added a pizza oven to this one, but the pizza slice is a little too arch shaped for me. This one I think is great and would make a beautiful logo for a pizza shop. I love the toppings scattered around. But this fourth one I absolutely love. It doesn't show the oven, but the rest is exactly what I'd want for a logo. I'm going to upscale this one to use later when we fix the text and convert to a vector graphic. The next tip I want to show you is adding famous artists to these to give them more of a unique look. So I'm going to copy and paste the same prompt again, but this time I'm adding in the style of Pablo Picasso. Let's generate and see what Midjourney gives us. Adding Pablo Picasso to the prompt gave us some pretty unique designs. The top two are very Picasso-esque, I would say. This third one is very cool and quirky as it made a pizza oven out of pizza. And the fourth one I could definitely see being a real logo for an Italian pizza shop. Since these are logos, you don't have to limit yourself to famous artists. But you can add famous logo artists too, like Paul Rand who designed many of the world's leading logos like Ford, UPS, IBM and many more. So let's add his name and see what it generates for us. It created four very cool designs here like a pizza with a door inside it for the shop door, one that looks like a pizza parlour. This one with the slice over the sign, but not sure if I'm keen on the little slice underneath it. And finally a very cool logo that has slices coming out of it. So now you've seen the logo design process, let's make a little mascot for our pizza shop too. So once again we will copy and paste the original prompt but make a few changes. We'll change it to a cute logo design and we'll change showing to holding and remove the pizza oven part as we won't be needing that. Let's make sure the V5 tag is there and hit generate. It made four very cute pizza mascots but not quite what I was looking for. So let's add human mascot and try again. That's more like it. I also added dressed as a pizza chef. This one looks like he has pizza face disease, so we'll skip that one. This one looks like he's been through some major pizza based work accident that's best left unspoken about. But this fourth one I really like. So now we have our logo and our mascot. I'll show you a cool way to get just a single letter logo for our pizza shop too. Although Midjourney is not great with words, it does pretty well with single letters. By simply using the same prompt but asking it to create the letter P in the style of a pizza, it created these. I love how it uses the toppings to add details to the letters, and only the top left was nowhere near what I asked for. So now we have all of our images, I'm going to load them up into Photoshop. You can of course use any photo editor you wish, but I will show you how quick and easy it is to correct the text on these logos to make them exactly what we want. This isn't a Photoshop tutorial, so I will speed up the process. But you essentially want to edit out the existing text by painting over it. You can use the eyedropper tool most editors have to select the colour you wish to paint over it with and start painting. You then want to select a new text to write into the space and move it around until it fits perfectly. By changing the font, the size, the arch, angle, etc. you can get something that looks like this. And using the same technique, we can turn this one, which is a little more tricky due to the way the text follows the curve of the white banner, but we end up with something perfectly usable for a pizza shop logo. 
So the final step is to turn our logo into a vector graphic so it can be resized to any size without any loss of quality. I'll be using Adobe Illustrator for this, but you can also use editors like Affinity Editor. So for Illustrator, I will first load up the logo. I then head to the very top and click the arrow next to Trace Image and click on Low Fidelity Photo. This will automatically trace the image into Illustrator. Once this is done, it's good to drag the image off of the white canvas so we can see what we're doing better. Then head back to the top bar and click on the Expand button. This will separate all the elements into their own layers in Illustrator, which makes working with them so much easier. Now we have everything separated, we can go ahead and delete all the parts we don't want. Like the white background and any artifacts it leaves behind. Like these small white lines around the logo, we can get rid of those. We can also fix any holes or issues by adding in shapes and blocks of the same colour so they won't be seen. The way you do this will be different depending on what editor you're using, so please refer to the help these editors provide to achieve the result you want. You can also remove the text we added previously in Photoshop and change it to something totally different if you'd prefer. You could skip the Photoshop phase altogether and come straight here to edit text, but I find the previous way a little easier for newer users. But as you can see, changing the text from my name to Mario and changing the colours was pretty simple once you get the hang on Illustrator. I hope this video has been a help to you in your logo making journey. Thank you again for watching this video and for all your support. Until next time, I'll see you again in the next video.